Good evening, everyone. My name is Leah, and thank you for staying with us. Um, and we're going to answer some questions. If you have anything you want to ask, hold on to the thought because later we're going to open up the discussion so we can get back to your questions too. Good manner. Thank you for spending time with us, first yeah, of all. Yeah. And congratulations on such an emotional and raw movie. If the coming of age story is really touching. I felt all the emotions. Um, and first of all, I would like to start with the title because the original title, if you translate it, means something like, like a lucid dream or an omen, right? But I've yeah. heard there's like another layer to it. So what does it mean in Icelandic? And what does the title Beautiful Beings to you mean? It basically, in Icelandic, it's Bertrini, and that directly translated into English is Omen. But Omen is too grand and big. Because in Berthe, uh, like in Iceland, uh, dreaming something that then happens isn't such a big thing. It's just, it's quite uh, common, you know, in our society. So Bertrini is just more like a word, uh, like a nice word about it. So uh, we, we we didn't find an English translation, and in the end, we kind of found these beautiful beings, which I felt kind of connected both to the supernatural element, but also just to the boys themselves as characters. Okay, so beautiful beings related to the the character. The yeah, yeah, more, yeah, more, more to the boys. Yeah. Okay. How was it working with so many young, talented actors, which some of them, or most of the young actors, are not even um, professional actors, right? So you casted them? Yeah, they, all of them are kind of first-time actors. Uh, they, we find them uh, like a year before the, the, uh, the shooting, and then we train them slowly. We, we kind of have a workshop like twice a week, just teaching them basic acting, and then when we feel like they're ready, we start to introduce them to the script, and like step by step, until uh, yeah, until they they're quite ready to do the shooting. Okay. But it's a big program. Yeah. yeah. Did you find some difficulties acting with so many young people, or was it refreshing? No, I I've always done that since my short films, and so we kind of we been kind of you know learning more and more how to do it well. And I felt like this time, uh, yeah, it was quite easy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and it is fun. Like, those kids bring so much energy and positivity to the set. So all the crew that are, ha are having a, like a hard, long day, then they see those smiling kids and they're all energetic and happy. And so it kind of lifts the spirit of the crew as well. Yeah, yeah. So I think everyone kind of enjoys working with those. Yeah, okay, that is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and if we look at the, the characters that they play, mm. if we played this on and let's say the movie just went on and it shows these young adults as actual grown-ups, what do you think, where would the characters be? Do you think they would be successful? <laughs> uh, I think it would be different for every character. And, and I, I think, you know, in a friend group like this, maybe not all boys will make it you know, make a successful career because some will, you know, fall a bit under. Yeah. Okay. And in the movie we, we see this this back and forth or even this merge of reality versus finding the next high and this this supernatural or the dream. Mm. Um and I feel like it's 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 a brilliant reflection of what it means to grow up mm. and like finding that like balance between reality and all those dreams. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What were you, what was your thought showing these these contrasts? Uh, my thought was just, I wanted to show, like a, in Iceland, it is quite common that people dream stuff, send stuff, see things, and it's not such a big deal, you know. So uh, every family probably has someone, you know, a uncle or, or a grandmother or someone that has that, so uh, or at least many families. So I, I and I wanted to portray that element in the film without the taking over the story. So I wanted to keep it as a side story, so people in Iceland could connect. You know, like people that maybe have that experience could connect to it without 
without it being like made into something that wasn't really realistic. Yeah. yeah. So basically, for me, this is quite realistic. Okay. All of this. <laughs> so the supernatural part is also related to the Icelandic culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, no, not everyone, but but a, a lot of people in Iceland connect to that. Mm. Yeah. Do you? Can you read hands? <laughs> no, I. I <laughs> I mean, as a kid, I think uh, a lot of kids in Iceland try to read hands, but most of them will look spit in the hand. You know, say, oh, there's going to be a pool and spit. <laughs> but but uh, no, no, I mean, I, mean, I in, in my family, this, we yeah, really relate to this. And uh, yeah, and, and it's not, yeah, basically, it's not an omen thing in Iceland. It's more yeah. like a, a thing. Okay. Just, yeah. And what fascinates you about cinema in Iceland? Because technically you could have chosen English-speaking actors, right? And it would probably be more commercializable that way, but you choose to, to stick with the Icelandic. I, I mean, I'm Icelandic, I live in Iceland. It's, uh, I, I have a production company in Iceland, so I can have full control over the films when I do them in Iceland. If I would be doing this film English-speaking in another country, uh, at this point in my career, I wouldn't have full control. Like I would have to lean more on some produ like financiers and you know mm -hmm. others. And I, I like making films where, where we also produce them. And when I come to the point where I can produce English speaking films, uh, I, I will probably. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I have a lot of questions, but I think we should give word to the audience now. So, if yeah, let's start with you. Congratulations for your film, really uh, wonderful. Is it real facts? Uh, is it inspired for uh, uh, things that you, you have been a uh, witness or friends or? Yeah, it, it, it's inspired from uh, uh, my old neighborhood suburbs of Reykjavik. And in the 90s and 2000s, there was a lot of violence and kind of toxic masculinity in Iceland. It was like, so people, from you know my generation and older, they can connect quite uh, quite a lot to that culture, yeah. But but it's gone much better now. I don't know. It's not. I don't. You know, it used to be maybe thirty percent of boys or something that would take part of that, but now it's you know much less. Maybe five percent or ten percent that that would actually behave like that. Yeah. So th there are good things, <laughs> you know, been happening in Iceland since then. Yeah. Okay, thank you for the contribution. Yeah, the girl, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, they are all, like, they didn't know each other before, but they're all quite good friends now. Uh, the boys in like in uh, when we started casting, we were kind of fantasizing a bit about that maybe we could typecast some boys, you know, find boys that were, were were a little bit rough and and in this behavior. But no, we couldn't get any of those boys into casting. So the, all of these boys that came to us were, you know, wanted to be actors and were coming from supportive families and and and. So yeah, so that so we had to kind of uh, yeah train them into the roles, which I also think was better in, in the end. Like in the process, we also like you know it's such a it's such a commitment, and you have to work so hard to to act in a film like this that um, you kind of have to have a very supportive family, and and you have to have you know you. Preferably have to be in sports and kind of know you've done this before. You've trained for a long time to kind of, you know, compete in something. So, so it, yeah. So you have to kind of be used to this. And so most of those boys had that, you know, had that before. Sorry. Yeah. 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 We worked a lot with body language, and we also t made them work out. You know, train their muscles and. And, and kind of grow their confidence with their body as well. Especially like Connie and Ati who were supposed to be kind of strong. So they had to kind of, 
you know, gain contact and treat their bodies. No. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I think it was a fantastic film uh, because it, is, it was quite cruel I and mean, they were violent. But there is a switch when, you, when they started to, you know, you could be friends. Um, but it's really, if you, look, if you look at the environment, there were absent fathers. Even the mothers were also absent, but they were more present than the fathers. The fathers were absent, they were cruel, but the boys, they seemed to find a way of, of surviving. But still, of course, it, it's, it's terrible that they were left for surviving because what happened was cruel things in yeah. the I think it's, it's really, uh, if you look at society today, at least in Sweden, we have a lot of problems with, uh, with uh, boys that are recruited from criminal, criminals. So I think it, it, it's really, uh, it's, it's a really good part to see this and as part of the debate. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, for me, the most important part of the film is the friendship of the yeah. boys and kind of show how they can support each other and love each other even though you know the, they behave like they are because I had friends very similar to this and they were really good boys but they were sometimes doing terrible things and the reason why they did terrible things wasn't because they were bad it was just something else that kind of you know created problems with them and, and with me at that point as well, you know, and, and I'm not taking responsibility, but it's more like, I think it's important for society to realize, like, if you're going to tackle, and it's, I didn't make the film, you know, for the society like that, but, but I wanted, yeah, people to, like, it's important that, uh, yeah, young criminal boys, there's a reason why they behave like this, and it's not, you know, because they're bad, it's because the society in some parts that has kind of failed them. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. I think they were really beautiful. You really saw the friendship. I think that you costed the guys without that experience was really, because there was some sort of uh, reality on it. It was mm. just wonderful. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, do you think it would have been different if the group of friends was girls? You think the story would have evolved, or the friendship would have been very different? I, I, it's hard for me to say because I'm not a girl and I didn't experience my childhood like that. So and, uh, I don't know. I, I just know that with boys they tend to stay in groups in those years, mm -hmm. and it becomes like a very loyalty thing within the group that everyone has to stick together. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's the same, same with the girls. Um, I think I, 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 I kind of see what I know and like what I've heard from my friends, it's more like two, three years, it's, it's smaller groups. Yeah. Yeah, but... Uh, I, I really love the character of the father, but I'm so curious about behind the scenes. Uh, where is he alone? Uh, in, in a home for just... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like just foster, per, foster parents. Yeah. Foster parents? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my yeah. son has a question. He's yeah, very quite the first real question I was going <laughs> to... Okay. He wants to have a microphone. <laughs> okay, so... Good film. Thank you. <laughs> the thing... You remember me to start when was introducing me. Um, and I just want to say I watched this movie when I was nine and I'm nine now. <laughs> just wanted to say that. Um, and I watched it when I was nine. <laughs> was it hard for you to watch it? No. No? Sorry. We were in Denmark, and in Denmark the age limit is 11. And he was allowed to sit with me on the premiere there, but I covered his eyes for the worst scene. So <laughs> <laughs> because I think I'm from Germany, and I yeah. think in Germany it's 16 plus, right? 
is it's it, even is higher. Do you think that's Germany? justified? In, in a, no, I, I think 13 is the right age. Yeah. Uh, 12, 13, I think that's fine. 11 is a bit young. Mm -hmm. 9 is definitely too young. <laughs> 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 okay, I think we have time for one more question. Who wants the honor of the question? Yeah, of course. Of course. It will have a small release, I think, next week in Stockholm, uh, in, in Sweden. But I, okay. yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you for staying. Yeah. Good luck for your future projects. Yeah. Thank, thank you for being with us. Nu är det på